Are you ready for possibly my favourite quant trick of all? It's to do with three-way Venn diagrams, or three overlapping sets, and the question would look something like the one you can see on screen. If you think Venn diagrams is a topic that you know already, try pausing the video and seeing if you can do this one without any help. I'm going to explain the origin of the trick too, just for those who like to understand why it works. First, here's the question. A group of students must study at least one of three subjects at a community college, math, English, and science. If 30% of the students study science, 50% study math, and 35% study English, and if 10% of the students study two of the three subjects, what percent of the students study all three subjects? It can be quite confusing. Before I give you my amazing formula, and the one I think that works in all circumstances, it's a little bit complicated, so I want to explain the origin of it for a second. First, let's see a three-way Venn diagram. That's physically what it would look like, sometimes with a box around the edge. And we can label it A, B, and C. And many of you would immediately say, oh, it's a simple formula, right? It's just that the total of all three bubbles is just A plus B plus C. That's not true, and some of you would know why that's not true, because we have double counted some regions, and we have really over counted the middle region. The formula can't just be total equals A plus B plus C. So what's the complication? The first complication is the three middle bits that I've highlighted here. Collectively, I'm gonna call them D. D represents the total, the sum, of all of those three regions. Not each one, not one of those individual regions, all three of them added up equals D. And I've called it D because you could say it stands for double count. If we add the three bubbles A, B, and C, we'll have double counted those three regions. For example, the top one would have been counted in A's bubble and in B's bubble, so we've double counted it. If we've double counted the region D, then what do we have to do in the formula? We have to subtract D because we've double counted it. Imagine you count the number six twice and you do six plus six when you were meant to only do it once. Well, you would get the answer 12 and you would have to subtract six to get back to the real answer, which is six. So that's the origin of the minus D part of the formula. What's the rest of the formula? Well, as you can see in the middle, there is a region I'm gonna call E because alphabetically it makes sense. And that region, we have counted one, two, three times. We have triple counted that region E. We counted it once in A's bubble, then again with B's bubble and with C's bubble. And what do you do if you triple count something? Like there are six people in a room, but you count by accident six plus six plus six. Well, you have to subtract two lots of six. If you've triple counted something, you have to subtract it twice to get the actual thing itself. So we have take away two E, where E is the middle section of the three-way Venn diagram. I'll be honest, those last two steps are the hardest to remember. Students sometimes think it's plus, they sometimes think the D has a two, or there's a three next to the E, no. The formula so far is total equals A plus B plus C, the three bubbles added up, take away D, take away 2E. One thing I want to clarify before I show you the last bit of the formula is that the A, B, and C here represent the entire bubble of A. That's why I put the A above the bubble. A isn't that bit inside the bubble, A. It's the entire bubble A. Same thing with B and C. Anyway, what's the rest of the formula? Well, sometimes there are people in none of the bubbles. And of course, we'll call them none, and we have to add them in because you can't forget the total might also include those people in none of the bubbles. Most of the questions don't have people outside all through the bubbles, but at the harder level, they might. And there we have it. I promise you we've reached the end. That is my magical formula for three overlapping sets sometimes called three-way Venn diagrams. 
the total of everyone equals the first entire bubble plus the second entire bubble plus the third entire bubble. Take away D, where D is the sum of those three regions labeled on the diagram. Take away 2 times E, where E is the middle section, the people in all three bubbles, plus non in case there are people in none of the bubbles. I know that sounded kind of hard, but watch how easy questions become once you know, understand, and remember this formula. In this situation, what's the total going to be? Well, we're dealing with percentages, so the total will be 100. A is 30, because 30% 30 of the students study science, 50 for math, 35 for English. The D here is the sentence 10% of the students study two of the three subjects. So we know the total of the three regions in D add up to 10%. 10% of them study two of the three subjects, so D is 10. The E we don't know, so we leave it as just E. That's the triple count. That's how many students study all three subjects. And we know that there are no students who study none because of the wording at the beginning of the question. It said the students must study at least one of the subjects. So there is no students who are in none. So we call that zero. There we go, Bob's your uncle. We've got the answer practically. Just plugged it into the formula. Doing some simple addition, we get 100 equals 105. That's if you add the bubbles and take away the 10. Minus 2e, take away 105 from both sides. Negative 5 equals negative 2e. Divide both sides by negative 2. There's many ways to solve this. 2.5 equals e. So the answer is 2.5%. Don't worry if that went quite fast. I've got another example coming up testing the exact same thing. Except this time, we're not even going to do a diagram. The formula is so powerful, so good. By the way, leave a like and a comment if you like formula just as much as me. The formula is so good, we don't even need the diagram anymore. What about this question? In a cohort of 75 students at Edmonton School, each student attends at least one of three classes, politics, economics, and philosophy. 28 students attend politics class, 22 students attend economics class, and 43 students attend philosophy class. If only two students attend all three classes, how many students attend exactly two classes? If you think this is too hard, you're going to see how easy it is. If you think this is too easy, the final question might test you a little bit more. Anyway, how are we going to do this? Without even a Venn diagram, just with a formula, which after this question, I want you to memorize so I don't have to show you the formula on the screen anymore. You need to remember that formula. The total is A plus B plus C minus D minus 2E, where D stands for the double count, E for the triple count, plus non. Here, the total is 75. A, B, and C are 28, 22, 43. The order doesn't matter. But then it said two students attend all three classes. Which letter is that? That's the E. E stands for being in all three bubbles. It's the D here that we don't know. By the way, again, the non is zero because it said each student attends at least one of the classes. So none of them are outside of all three bubbles. Now it's just simple addition and subtraction. If we add those up, we get 75 equals 93 minus D minus four. 93 minus four is 89. 89 minus D equals 75. So we can just see that D must be 14, answer A. By now, I bet you're pretty impressed, right? That was a really hard question that over 90% of students would get wrong without training. And now with this beautiful, elegant formula, which you know the origin of, you can get it right in 30 seconds or less. Let's move on now to the last question, which is the hardest of them all. And what makes this question hard? Well, I've shown two different ways that they can present a question where they don't give you the information directly about A, B, and C, etc. What they could do is give you a visual Venn diagram, as you can see on the right, or they might give you a table. And I've seen this once where they give you a table. And with the table on the left, many of you might be thinking, well, I can immediately use the formula, right? 
with A, B, and C, train, bus, and car, and then D being the total of the three double overlaps, and E being the two for train, bus, and car. The problem is that if they ever do it in table format, there are a lot of overlapping groups. For example, when they say train and car is 12 on the table, they mean it could be train and car only and not bus, or it could be train, bus and car. That counts as train and car. So essentially in table format, they're mixing together, mushing together the triple overlap, the E with the Ds, and it gets confusing. So this doesn't happen if we have a visual Venn diagram. So if in the event they only give you a table, you would have to temporarily, and this is very rare, but you'd have to draw a three-way Venn diagram. It's not a big problem because you've seen how they look already. And how would we fill out that Venn diagram? Start in the middle. Notice it says train, bus, and car is two. So start in the middle of the Venn diagram, as you can see on the right, with a two. Then notice how it says train and car is 12 from the table. Well, looking back at the Venn diagram, if the entire overlap between train and car is 12, and we know in the middle that we have a two, that leaves a 10 left over for the left-hand section, because the 10 and the two add up to that overlap of 12. So what I'm trying to say is if they give you a table, you have to fill in the Venn diagram yourself manually, and then we can apply the formula. It should only take about 40 to 50 seconds though, because you start in the middle with the two, and then you work your way outwards. As before, you put the totals on the top of the bubble. And if you didn't know about that, you can check out my other Venn diagram video. So the train bubble has a 35 on top, etc. This time I did put a box around the three-way diagram because there is a section called non, and that has 25 people. So I like to put a big box around it all. One last demonstration of how you'd fill it out. Notice how it says from the table, bus and car is four. Well, if you look at how the bus and car bubbles overlap, we have the two in the middle that we started with, and we know the total is four, so that leaves two left over for the right-hand section of D. Notice we can't fill out the final section of D, the final region of D, which is at the top. We just have to leave a question mark because we don't know about the overlap between train and bus. Anyway, however they present it, how are we actually going to answer this question? The question is, a survey was conducted among 120 people asking which mode of transport or combination of modes they used on a weekly basis. The results were placed in a table, but one entry was missing. How many of those surveyed used a train and a bus, but not a car? That's the question mark on the three-way Venn diagram. Well, if we have the visual Venn diagram, we can skip straight to the formula. And as I said, if we just have the table, we have to fill in the Venn diagram, but that should take only less than a minute, I would say, maybe 40 seconds. And one last time, you start in the middle with the number two, and then you work your way out, calculating what's left over. And the only reason we're filling in part of the Venn diagram anyway, is just to make it a bit clearer how to use the formula. What's the formula again? Do you know off by heart? It's total equals A plus B plus C minus D minus 2E plus non. And that's the formula we're going to use. Here it is in full. The total is 120. That's at the top. We know that. The three bubbles, judging by the totals, are 35 plus 38 plus 52. Because we know in total, 35 people took the train, 38 took the bus, 52 took the car, minus D. Now remember, D represents the total of those three regions highlighted in the first part of this video. That's the 10, the two, and the question mark that we don't know. It's not the 12 and the four from the table, as I explained earlier, because they also include the two from the triple overlap. So you'd have to take away two from each of those, as I've explained a couple of times already. Anyway, so the D represents the total of question mark plus 10 plus two, and the E is of course two. So we take away two lots of two, plus the non, which is 25. Doing the math there, 35 plus 38 plus 52 is 125. 
And then applying the negative to the bracket, we get negative question mark minus 12 minus 4, because 2 times 2 is 4, plus 25, which gives us 120 equals 134 take away question mark, meaning that question mark must be 14. So there were 14 people who used a train and a bus, but not a car. Notice, by the way, if we're filling in the table, the remaining entry would actually be what? 16. Because the table, when it says train and bus, means train and bus, and also including people who had the train and bus and car as well. So that would be the 14 that we've worked out, the question mark, plus the two who took all three. So the table is different from the diagram. If you're given a table, you have to draw the diagram. It does add at least a minute to the question. But once you have the diagram, you can just apply the formula just as we did before. By the way, nine times out of 10, it won't be a table or a diagram. It will be like the last two questions where we can skip straight to the formula. What made this harder is that they didn't just directly tell us what the D was or the E. We had to derive it ourselves using a diagram. Anyway, I thought I'd include that last example just in the off chance the test questions this. And I don't want you guys to sue me and say, he didn't tell me about creating a diagram. 10% of the time you might have to create a diagram just to make it clearer what the D is to help you in using the formula. Hope this helped. Please do let me know if it did.